you know, much like every other horror YouTuber in existence, we've seen Alien Romulus. We could start there. That's the uh, probably the big popular one that um, hope, hopefully the rest of YouTube will have exhausted themselves talking about it. And here we can swoop in and, and pick the bones clean. <laughs> yeah, and uh, let's see if I can present. I'm going to present. Let's see if I can do this. Hit the present work. button. You hit double click. You right okay. click. Right, right click. This, this technology. Oh, see, it's oh. right there on the screen. Yes, there it is. Look at that. Streamyard. Guys, every if, penny. <laughs> the hundred dollars a day we pay for this <laughs> out of our exorbitant budget, this is what we can do. Uh, I go gone without meals, which is <laughs> terribly, uh, you know, terribly dangerous for a pre-diabetic like myself. So usually with these episodes that we for bits and checks, we kind of keep it to a short 30 minutes, but it, we can run over. We, we have no certain time limit. We can talk as long as we want, go off on tangents. And please, you know, we're not as focused with these episodes. So with that said. Clay, you wanted to start off with Ram Ramulus. Ramulus. <laughs> you want to start off with Ramulus. Alien Ramulus. Alien yes, Ramulus. Yes. This is the much anticipated and long awaited sequel to the iconic space horror comes uh, to us via uh, writer and director Fede Alvarez, uh, who I've been a big fan of since the Evil Dead reboot, remake, however you want to consider that one. And he also did Don't Breathe, two films that I quite enjoyed. Um, the film stars Kayla E. Spaney, David Johnson, Archie Renault, Isabella Mer Merced, and uh, Spike Fern, and Eileen Wu, who we see in the poster art, uh, yeah. has a thing attached to her face. And we know from the trailers that she dies immediately, which isn't a spoiler because they show <laughs> us that in the trailer. They showed too much in the trailers. That's one of the the big complaints I had about the trailer. Yeah. So the end of the, and the, the, the art, the cover art, of course, the. <laughs> The theatrical art here. Um, so yeah, I would consider this out of the trilogy I have up on my screen. This is the good. I'm not gonna say uh, I thought Romulus was perfect. No, uh, I thought it was a fun film. And uh, but let's start off with what do you want to start off with in regards to Romulus? Well, um, it's it, it. I was excited to find out that Fede Alvarez was uh, going to direct the next Alien movie. I was surprised. I was like, "Oh, pleasantly surprised." You know, I was like, oh, "This is this is wild." It's like you got a guy that excels at, um, uh, you know, putting fun twists on standard tropes of of young people getting into predicaments that they should have avoided. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say that they're, the characters were dumb because they were they were put in this position out of a sense of necessity for you know getting getting out of the squalor of their lives and um you know so I was, I was surprised that fede was kind of picked to helm this film yeah i was pleasantly surprised too um uh, i i really enjoyed the the evil dead reboot that he did reboot remake uh, that i got into an argument with someone on threads about what uh, if, if, was there a difference between a remake and a reboot um i don't think there's that big of a difference but anyways fantastic Evil Dead remake. I loved it. It was great, gory, bloody, yes. and uh, I, I I'd seen his other films up to this point. Not all of them, I don't think. Uh, but uh, when I heard that he was going to helm this, uh, I was really excited because uh, Alien is one of my favorite franchises. Yeah. Despite its flaws, uh, we can all agree that the first two were just masterpieces on on their own. Um, I'm sure there's mixed uh, mixed opinions on three <laughs> and uh, Resurrection and the Prometheus. Uh, chain and of course avp so well I've, I've heard that um uh that that uh the director of alien who i should know it's but ridley scott ridley scott yes it's uh <laughs> who, who could ever forget <laughs> uh, yeah i've heard that he didn't like uh james cameron's approach to the second film that those two were kind of at odds about the yeah. uh, direction so i've always thought that was kind of interesting but this film is nestled neatly between those two movies and you know what what can you really say about it like all of the criticism is valid but i loved it anyway you know the, the yeah. cgi character was was you know kind of patently terrible to look yeah. at it, you got used to it but it was it, it was um done respectfully but I, you can't help but kind of feel like oof when you first see it and then yeah. it, it keeps going and you just you accept it but you never really learn to love it that's kind of my the way i approach that character yeah and i think if we're if we're going to start off with uh, you know that that would be 
a flaw of, of this movie. Um, by the way, there's going to be spoilers if you don't know that by now. You know, it, it just uh, I think you haven't people, seen it yet. I think most people have seen it. Who's going to watch this? So yeah. um, when, when we see that character, there's some other things that were I thought were unnecessary. I don't know if that was a Fede's uh, uh, artistic choice to do this. You know, where to put an actor uh, Ian Holm who played Bishop, not Bishop, um, uh, uh, yeah. Ash, Ash, played in the Ash original. in the original. Um, I, I don't feel it, that should have been a thing. I think that was just fan service and really the fans didn't like it. And <laughs> yeah, across the board, people were pretty uh, about it. Yeah. And it, it just, uh, I, I can understand them trying to say, okay, yeah, you know, these are replicants. These are synths. These are, you know, they, we make multiple copies of the same one to work on different ships and things in a scientific capacity or a maintenance yeah. capacity. So I, I got that um, from it, but uh, I, it was off-putting to see Ian Holmes face and caricature on in a CGI AI kind of uh, uh, yeah and and um yeah I hated it when they did it in that uh Star Wars movie that Rogue One with uh Peter is it Peter Cullen's character or Peter or, Cushing Peter Cushing yeah yeah oh yeah I must have had a small stroke I can't remember <laughs> iconic <laughs> actors names yeah. I hated it in that movie I you know, I, I hated it a little less in this, but then because it's an automaton playing an automaton, but yeah, it, it is a big wart on the, the, the movie's nose. He consulted the family, he asked yeah. their permission. They it was all done as respectfully as you could. I wish that they had done the same thing, but just had it as a prosthetic instead of CGI, because the bad yeah. CGI is what kind of pulls you out of it. I think it would have worked better if he was just a mangled, messed up puppet, because then yeah. he could have been all puppet. that's a good that's a good thought. I thought, you know, maybe instead of just doing like the full face, you know, maybe half the face is gone, but you could still yeah. kind of tell that it was uh, Ashes or Ian Holmes face. But, you know, we can't go back and rewrite the film. Um, the they did. A, they did. A, I thought they did a, a nice mix of the the individual alien horror from the first one and the action alien from aliens and yeah yeah it definitely had some nods to uh our our favorite stealth horror game alien isolation oh yeah alvarez was a big fan you could see the save points in there so um <laughs> I always I, I, I always said about that uh, when I saw the save points and I was uh, my wife was sitting next to me. I was like, oh, that's from Alien Isolation. That's from Alien Isolation. And then I was just like, why didn't they just say why didn't they just save and before going that dark hole? Because <laughs> <laughs> they're going to lose all their progress. It's like yeah. dude, you're way dialed in, to, you know. <laughs> but I mean, we we enjoyed it. My partner is an even bigger fan of Alien than I am. She saw it, uh, the movie at a very impressionable age. Her dad took her when she was like nine years old, nice. way too young to be seeing such <laughs> such a movie. But she she was so pumped for it that when i we had tickets for saturday and i offered to go again on friday before and so we saw it twice in less than oh, 24 awesome. hours so um i enjoyed it i thought it was good can't wait to have it on on blu-ray it's, it's, yeah. a, it, it's a it's a flawed movie but horror movies thrive because of their flaws it's yeah uh, you, it, you'd almost kind of expect it to be a little bit uh janky here and yeah and i think it's uh you know it the flaws i mean the romulus has his flaws and i think one of the bigger flaws is like with the the notion of prequels and uh, canon and lore being introduced between movies that were yeah. written and uh, written and shot you know 40 years ago it's it, it's tough to kind of juxtapose the new stuff that we find in romulus why wasn't introduced in like alien or alien oh well, you because it takes place after alien but in between before aliens right yeah yeah so, yeah. so they, they they shoehorn in like uh, ridley scott's black goo from prometheus and yeah. i i guess the get out is is like well the whole space station again spoilers uh crashed into this you know these comets the so it's all gone so i they try to tie it up with a bow he's uh yeah. he he showed interest in doing an alien versus predator i think that that might be kind of a cursed franchise at that point. But. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, off in a little tangent here, I thought the Alien versus Predator, when I first saw the first one, I thought, okay, it was fun, you know, whatever. You know, because I wasn't I wasn't really obsessed with the canon and, you no. know, this doesn't fit in it. And then when I saw Requiem, I was like, okay, that was cool too, you know, because there were some cool kill scenes. Yeah, it wasn't the best, but, you know, uh, totally pop, total popcorn movies for sure. Yeah. 
um continuing like i i walked out of romulus loving it but at the same time annoyed with the fan service there were there are lines there were shots taken that were literally lifted from aliens and alien and dropped in the movie and the actors just kind of repeated what the actors in the original movies did there were uh, there's the scene where you know the 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 guy is showing the heroine how to hold a, a rifle and how to load it and it's the, it's that same scene between hicks and yeah. ripley uh in aliens and you know these are these are you know people who aren't really that fan of the movies or don't really pay that te- much attention may have not noticed but these are shot for shot lifted and i thought that was very annoying i thought the uh <laughs> i thought the fan service with the the bitch line was yeah. like unneeded That's- and uncalled for and i just rolled my eyes in the theater and it was just like <laughs> come on dude uh, oddly that did not bother me probably because i enjoyed um the that character so much that that line uh, was delivered by the synthetic character who's hands down the best character yeah, in andy. this movie yeah. andy he was great you know yeah. I, I really i really liked him um you know, I, I enjoyed it, and I'm I'm excited to see what Alvarez does next. Well, you know, let me just jump off from bagging on it to saying what I really dug about it. Cool. That uh, I really enjoyed the additional world building um, that we see, especially at the very beginning when you see Waylon Yutani has a boot on the neck of workers. That you know these people are trapped in their situations; their loved ones are dying, and it's it's a hopeless situation, and it's like when capitalism goes full scale unregulated uh this is balls out what happens you know you may not say hey they still get paid for the work but you know indentured yeah. servitude wasn't considered a slave labor either but it technically was it's a great motivator to get you on the side of the characters and um you know like a lot of film reviewers were like oh they're dumb kids doing dumb things and then they get in trouble doing it but i i you know like their their impetus to do this was out of desperation yeah. so i um i related to them and i liked all the performances i thought the, the yeah. film was really well cast even the uh you know like even miss Wu, who didn't have much screen time i thought that they did a good job kind of telling you a little bit about her character right before her chest yeah. explodes i thought uh i thought rain um uh, the character rank uh, played by kaylee spaney yeah um she i was a little iffy on her at first because i was like uh you know she doesn't have that you know to me uh, ripley sigourney weaver uh embodied like total you know it was a a leader she was a powerhouse an alien she was like quarantine measures well i'm not letting that person on you know until he's fully quarantined you know she was a science i don't think she was a science officer but she was uh had a commanding lead and um i thought is is rain gonna is this kaylee spaney gonna be able to keep up and portray that and i don't think she did i think she played it her own way and how uh, a strong female lead should i guess in her her way I, i'm, I'm kind of explaining it weird i what i'm trying to say is i eventually fell into what she was doing and she turned out to be spectacular and yeah she totally sold me and the guy the guy who played tyler archie renault his reaction to andy not opening up the door for uh i think Kay, um, yeah. who was pregnant you know and he's he put all this emotion and you felt that emotion that andy was not relenting he was not opening this door he was doing it for the good of uh the company i guess yeah. but also you know not to kill everyone but at the same time you're like you feel the frustration of the humans so i love the acting i love where they were going with a lot of the story aspects i i thought the aliens were fantastic they, oh it's yeah they look great they look so good and the, the transition how they they kind of showed the transition of how the uh the baby alien goes from that and gestates really quickly into the adult full um xenomorph so <laughs> this big vaginal opening in the wall it was yeah, yeah. dude it, it had a lot and um you know like it was kind of funny they they said uh there's people are going to be divided on on the finale of this movie and at the time i wrote on a piece of paper and i put it in in the drawer uh in our uh <laughs> just like it in our coffee table i said this is what's going to be the ending and i wrote this on a piece of paper just remember that piece of paper and it said alien human hybrid on it yeah so i was kind of <laughs> close i was an engineer uh human hybrid well if anything you know yeah if anything this movie really kind of pulled lore and canon from all the all the movies um and 
and some were more subtle than others. And I really appreciated that too. I, I love yeah. that they're kind of incorporating that stuff into there. So uh, oh, yeah, the good. alien, like the, yeah, the alien is, I, I didn't predict it at first, but when, you know, Kay uses the black substance because she thinks it's going to heal her yeah. or maybe save her baby that and it's like, no, 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 no. no you're going to have a little Easter Island head. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, alien Romulus totally thumbs up uh, despite its flaws and some of the weird things it decided to do with um, some of the fan service. Totally enjoyable. Looking forward oh, to picking yes. it up. Absolutely. So do we want to uh, like, let's, let's go with the one that we're going to lay into the hardest last. Do you want to okay. do Arcadian next? Let's do Arcadian. So this is yes. the, the ugly for me. Can we, uh, it, we need to share a picture here. How do we do this? <laughs> uh, okay. So um, now that we're back on track, here, let's see what we're talking about. Arcadian. So Arcadian is a movie by director, Benjamin Brewer, the writers, yes. Mike Nealon and Nyland. And it stars Nicolas Cage, Jaden Martell, and Maxwell Jenkins. That's it right. was released uh, this year, 2024. And Arcadian is another in the line of Nicolas Cage horror movies that he's kind of <laughs> written. And, and I believe there's a writing team or he's friends with people that are just producing these scripts, particularly for Cage to star in and uh, have a vehicle. Um Definitely I, plays to his strength, and the the movie. <laughs> what made me laugh about it is that they there's plot points. You can tell that it was specifically written to have him, you know, come in there, be as cagey as possible, be as Nicholas Cagey as 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 he can be, which kind of draws you into the movie. <laughs> and then they figure out a way to write him out. Yep, <laughs> I was about to say for a little bit longer. <laughs> Like the last half of the movie, <laughs> and then he comes back in, in glorious fashion to, uh, you know, like deliver justice to these demons from hell that are yeah. spewing out. Now, this wouldn't work if the rest of the cast wasn't strong, and they were. Uh, yeah. the, the the two actors that play his sons, I thought, were really good. As was all the, the rest of the supporting cast. I thought yeah. that they were pretty good. It's a, it's a very kind of standard trope these days. It falls into the um, the quiet place kind of. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, so you're looking at uh, an, an apocalyptic uh, situation, a la you know, the, a quiet place, or I am legend, or you know, the the lone survivors, hell, even Walking Dead, things like yeah. that. You know, where it, it's not exactly something new. Um, and I'm not sure if they really do anything new in this film. Uh, there's some interesting ideas, I guess, but I think I, I, I just don't think it. But I, I was, I was entranced at the beginning. Because okay. I thought, I thought, uh, so we what we see at the beginning is Cage's character, like 15 years before the movie actually takes place, the full story takes place. He's walking and wandering through. You hear sirens and uh, uh, helicopters and like explosions happening, and the the city's on fire. It's it's like a a, a quiet place day one kind of uh, feeling. And he he stumbles across these two child two babies little literal babies in swaddling clothes just kind of lied out next to each other and I was just like thinking well he didn't even really check to see if there are any parents around maybe they're just going to get some water or but he it looks like he just picks up these babies and takes off with them well I, that's that's interesting that you read it that way I was assuming that that he was their dad and that the mom had died and that he oh. had to go out get supplies and then come back to take care of the kiddos I thought it was like uh like one of those situations like uh what movie was that Norwegian movies where the where the cop finds the baby in the graveyard and decides <laughs> <Yeah>. to <die. laughs> that our our favorite our our favorite, favorite yeah movie. i can't remember the name of it uh, yeah so i don't think it was actually ex not really explained it didn't have to be explained really you know it no. could just be just two just two babies lying around nicholas cage <laughs> is that much of a hero that he just <laughs> he just scoops up rando kids so we, we yeah so we don't really know what's going on what's happening you just know something's going crazy he grabs these two kids and then it just jumps 15 years later <laughs> yeah that's some, that's some stellar storytelling yeah but um uh you know i i i enjoyed it it was um what what i liked about it were the uh the monsters i thought were a pretty good payoff uh you know like i really like the monster designs these mm -hmm. these things 
don't look like they came from anything biological or anything that science could explain. They, they just, they don't behave or look like anything of this world. They had a very demonic look to them, which I, I, I liked. It kind of harkens back to critters a little bit for me. Like they, yeah. at one point they form this big homunculus wheel of the, 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 these, these creatures connected to one another and just yeah. it, it spins like a big wagon wheel. What, you know, um, <laughs> I, I, I like the performances. It was uh, it, it was a lot of um, I don't want to say padding because it was compelling storytelling to me is all the uh, the survival stuff, how they have to, you know, like you you have to get in before nightfall or you get eaten. to death. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 a movie that I, I did have to suspend some disbelief on certain oh. scenes and uh, certain pieces of plot i i will say i wasn't endeared to the creature design as you were uh mainly because i just didn't get a a clear picture of them it, it felt like it, yeah. the, the cuts were really quick uh the little yapping the thing yeah. was, it was cool um it, i didn't know <laughs> i it, it felt like they had just messed up in the the, the fast forwarding <laughs> of it and so yeah. they messed up in the film and they're like oh shit ah we can't change it let's just keep going um well, well, and I'm sure that that audiences are probably about as split on those creatures as as we are. I could see how somebody I liked them a lot. I could see how somebody wouldn't that they. I yeah. could see how they would want the movie to be a little bit more grounded with maybe something that wasn't quite so fantastical. Like these these things are these things make the Quiet Place aliens look reasonable they're yeah. just th their proportions aren't right they have faces on the front of their heads which yeah. sounds like i don't know how words work but if you see the design that's how it looks it looks like they almost have painted faces on the front of these uh, really ugly misshapen heads they look like yeah. moles from hell like it, i i think the apocalypse was the hell mouth opened and now yeah. they have to contend with hell's denizens spilling out into the earth they look like uh, like mutated rabbits from like Donnie Darko or something yeah. to me. Um, the, the yeah, so I I don't know if it's my old age, um, uh, but I, I find that I'm getting tired of movies just kind of thrusting us into situations where you just have to accept what's going on. Uh, I, yeah, there's some reasons like um, the reason I like A Quiet Place so much is that they, you know, you don't know the the aliens' motivations, you don't know why they're there but you do know that they're aliens you do know they're coming down and they're wiping out everything in their path that's yeah. fine i get it that's cool uh arcadian just kind of bypasses all that they try to allude to it between the love interest of one of the boys with one of the neighbor girls where they kind of have like these uh storytelling sessions on how they think it started and yeah where they think these things come from um that didn't make too much sense either <laughs> it was kind of ridiculous stories from both of them yeah, and it was just a way to kind of uh, bolster the relationship between those two characters yeah. more than a way to kind of give us any substantive backstory. Yeah, there were there's some things that I, I just kind of scratched my head on where you know where you know it's been 15 years since these things have been uh, taking over the planet, and we uh, we see signs that they have to board up the the people who are still alive have to board up their homes yeah. before nightfall, and then you know they can constantly hear the attacks outside. And uh, why the aliens just decide or aliens or demons, whatever they are, just decided at that moment to dig under the houses when they've had 15 years <laughs> to get around <laughs> all these defenses. And now they just figure out after 15 years, oh, you know what? We could just bur burrow underneath the homes and they'd come up from beneath in the basements and uh, get them that way. I, I want to helm a uh, alien invasion movie where they're just a colossal inconvenience. They're not violent. <laughs> they're just sloths. They're like sloths. They just eat up. They stink. They you, constantly uh, maybe an alien scat, but they don't. <laughs> otherwise, there's there's no no real threat. Maybe it's like the, an it follows kind of alien <laughs> feature where they're all just like walking and you keep looking at them and, and <laughs> you get closer to me. Okay. <laughs> they're just it, people carrying on with their lives stepping <laughs> over these slumbering aliens that you can't even eat them because they don't taste good or they're poisonous <laughs> or something it's just it's, yeah. it's just a big problem it's not really a compelling or scary movie but yeah you know, I'll, I'll punch it up <laughs> i think i think there's other little things i had to you know again i, I may just be nitpick, nitpicking here but you know we, we see one of the brothers who has to run home desperately every night uh, before sundown to to get home and he's always hanging out the this farm that's nearby and for a couple of scenes we see him leaping this chasm 
uh this deep chasm where it goes down i yeah. mean you don't see the bottom as he's jumping off jumping across <laughs> this thing and and then that one night he leaps and m m takes a misstep and he falls oh no he jumps catches the side but then he falls backwards into yeah. this chasm and he pretty much just gets up and brushes himself off and he's like okay i guess i'm in a chasm <laughs> and that was then it's like Nick, he has no broken bones, no oh, concussion. Yeah. I mean, just knock the wind out of him. I, I would expect a little bit more pain and suffering from falling. It yeah, it like was almost five feet. <laughs> yeah, it was almost like, and you're right. That that's totally valid. It's almost as if the him being injured was an inconvenience to the plot, so they just had him be okay, which is kind of and it, it, and there were you know, there's some of the weird um, film techniques where I just didn't understand where we were at the time um, when Nicolas Cage's character comes down into the the ravine. It's like, how did he know how to get into the ravine? Why doesn't this kid know how to get out of the ravine? How do he know to get? How do he know that that's even where he was? Yeah, you know, it, it was. Yeah. There's just some disbelief things. I was just wasn't disbelieving. That said, it was an entertaining movie. I thought the performances were great. I I just laughed out loud once they 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 knocked uh, Cage out for pretty much the last quarter of the movie. Oh yeah, and, and then you can he, see the guy the characters just literally dragging his body, and he's just like <sighs> taking a nap. I, I know it just wakes up out of getting just jacked up horribly, like just wakes up like Christ, and then just snatches a uh, like a firearm and just has his heroic moment. It's like okay, it's like, <laughs> I'll be in your movie, but I gotta uh, like first of all, I have to take a nap through half of it so that I can star <laughs> in another two movies, and yeah. then I, I gotta like have a, a hero scene at the end. I gotta just totally shoot more bullets than a shotgun can hold right so th this is this is a collaboration so so the writer michael nyland is cage's agent manager and producing partner <laughs> oh, uh, awesome so they the this are like yeah arcadian and the other uh not all the movies that you see him in but uh they're all very closely linked so I mean, you can close your eyes and pick a Shutter movie at random, and it's going to have Nicolas Cage, in, Cage it. in it. <laughs> I, I will say, I did, I did, I enjoy the hell out of a Colorado space, and you know, oh yeah, I like Mandy. Um, yeah. You know, like I like, I, I like. So you know, you could do worse. I did probably not the yeah. most glowing endorsement, but you could do worse. Shall Just, we move on to? Uh, let me stop. I, I hold on. Stop screen. Let's go to. As you can see, I'm very good at this. <laughs> um there we are and let me just find that neato key again on my wireless keyboard there we are hey not the night swim night to swim which you can watch for freezies if you've got a um amazon prime subscription which is about as much as this movie's worth but i digress this would be the bad of the trilogy here for, mm. for me. Now, now I, I fully apologize uh, for this, Clay, because I, I did say, oh, I, I, I wrote Clay a message. I was like, I'm curious about Night Swim because, you know, I thought it was going to play on some childhood fears, right? You know, where you know, where you're in the pool and for, our, for those of us who had access to a pool, then if you sw swam at night, you know, there's this eerie especially if you're out there alone or with a friend, you know, there's this eerie thing that you think something is beneath you, like sharks in a pool. Yeah, or, it's you know, a common fear, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what I thought. I was like, oh, maybe this is kind of playing on those common fears and we're going to see something similar to, you know, those those childhood fears. And uh, I remember, I, I I think we watched it around the same time because uh, you're like, oh, I'm watching Night Swim now. And it's like, oh, yeah, I just started too. And then, I remember apologizing we to each you. other. <laughs> oh, well, you didn't direct the goddamn thing. I know. I was like, I'm fault. so sorry you had to watch that. It's shit. I mean, it's like, yeah, like if we're if we're gonna start uh apologizing for watching shitty movies, it's gonna be a long life because we've uh <laughs> we, we've watched plenty of them. But um, so the film about a murderous swimming pool is written and directed by Bryce McGuire. And oh, big shocker here, it's his feature film debut. This um it's basically this was based off of a short short film so i've never seen the short film it probably held up a little bit better than a full feature but yeah. you could feel the fat on this thing and uh, yeah. it was just I, god i mean it was it would have almost benefited by being a worse movie like if it had just <laughs> just kind of been like just totally stupid like the room level kind of ineptitude but it wasn't it was right. just 
competent enough to where it it was criminally mediocre is this kind of the, the way i would describe this film it was done competently the yeah. actors did what they could with the dog shit script but it was <laughs> it was it was pretty bad i mean they they yeah. just they had nothing. Have you ever heard uh, Pat Oswalt's bit about uh, like Death Couch or whatever that that bit is? There's this movie no. called uh, I think it's called Death Couch, the couch that eats or the bed that eats, <laughs> deathbed. Death it's bed. the bed that eats people. Okay. Um, and uh, this is the this is the pool that eats people. It's 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 a haunted pool, and it it eventually gets around to you know harassing people not killing them just <laughs> harassing them it, it shows you some bad cgi it um it, it interrupts a sexy game of uh of, of, marco you know, polo marco polo um <laughs> i was hoping know, we see all the all the fun swim games ye be rammed into this movie unfortunately we just saw marco polo and a chicken there were others <laughs> like sharks and minnows or you know whatever but uh, yeah i mean if you're going if you're going to make a, a murderous swimming pool movie you've got to go for broke people have to get impaled on on pool noodles you need uh, somebody <laughs> uh getting a uh like a, a pool skimmer just shoved right up their took us and now they're mouth. They, they're they're jumping on the 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 diving board and it suddenly breaks and, and they get impaled underneath the the water yeah I mean, it's like, why didn't they talk to us? Like the the, the broken uh, diving board goes through the air and cuts three people in half. And there's just a, it's just an utter, like it would have to be, first of all, filthy. It's a pool. Why would you, I mean, people oh, not only, dipping. Not only uh, is it just a pool, it's a pool that's fed from a natural spring. Um, yeah. Which is, it is unusual. I know there's like pools that they used to use back a long time ago uh, that would be fed like that. But uh, that's, that's one of the reasons they make here for, for the pool being uh, haunted. So I, one of my biggest <laughs> gripes about this movie clay is that it is <laughs> full of just tropes. There's nothing. I mean, I always complain about nothing new that everything was predictable. All, all I could see was Amityville, uh, but stupider. And oh, where, yeah. And where, you know, the guy, the main dude is enjoying the enjoying the pool. He's got MS, uh, but somehow the pool is healing him. So he's having a great time with it, and he's getting possessed by the pool. And eventually, he he roids out and gets fucking pissed at his family, uh, a la Amityville. Uh, it, and then you know you, you see the usual shit like uh, I got to track down on who this house belonged to. I've got to I've got to do my research on and find the o other owners. And you see the the wife going out and doing everything that every other movie has done, hit all those same beats. And I was just like, oh. God, dude, dude, I was so stupid, dude. And, and I mean, like she comes to the conclusion that the pool is haunted with <laughs> literally no evidence <laughs> that would compel you to, to come to that conclusion. It's just like we've just been having bad luck here, man. I mean, you got MS, uh, you know, he had a spasm in the pool, nearly killed one of the neighbor kids. And yeah. They, and they reacted to it in a typical dipshit way, you know, like anybody reasonable would be like, wow, that was messed up. Maybe you shouldn't go near pools with that MS. But right there, you're like, you're alienated from the town. It was such <laughs> dog shit riding. And, and I, I remember as we were going into the movie going, what are they going to do with uh, a haunted pool premise? And the answer yeah. is not no, much. Nothing, nothing at all, dude. This is uh, the, the haunted pool premise was probably one of the stupidest premises I've ever seen put to film. And we've seen Veronica and <laughs> oh, this, God. Is, this is like, there were no rules to the pool. I mean, just, you know, there were no, you, apparently you, the pool could do shit outside the pool. So it, what was the point of even the pool being there? Um, because you know, people people were possessed when she goes to talk to when the wife goes to talk to the previous owner, the owner's obviously still possessed by the pool and she doesn't even <laughs> fucking live there, hadn't lived there for 15 years. And, I tell you, man, that that pool possession it's hard to shake. And, and then you have such great lines when when the father is finally fully possessed and he's chasing his daughter throughout through the pool and uh, around the around the uh around the house he he utters such uh genius lines as marco and she runs and he's oh. he's like you didn't say polo and i'm like oh genius <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's like we we're writing a better pool movie by accident making fun of this turd like okay think of the pool the pool rules that you saw as a kid no running so 
you know, like, okay, duh, lifeguard uh, tragically dies, angry lifeguard ghost, and yeah. somebody runs, they get killed horribly, no diving, and then they get bent in half diving, yeah. um, no having sex in the pool, and then something bad. No one got it's, caught in the drain. No one got get killed by the filtration system. It's, it's These are ob- like, I'm, obvious I'm, pool deaths that should have been put in <laughs> to fool everyone going, wow, there's a lot of people that's died in this fucking pool. You know, let's. <laughs> <laughs> Let's conduct an investigation. You know, it, it was it's it's so silly. And one of the things I really, really hated about this was when they tried to explain why the pool was, you know, because the first thing they tried to say is, like, oh, it's a spring that's derived from water that was magic water. They literally say <laughs> magic water in the film. I'm not fucking lying. And, they, and that is from the First Nations people. So they're oh. trying to blame the shit on First Nations people yet again, a la Pet Cemetery and any other film that wants to blame any any magical shit that fucks white people up. You know, it's it's it, blame it on the Native Americans. You know, it, it, I really felt that was dumb. It was just a oh, dumb it's... go-to. There's so many more original things you could have done. I'm so fucking weak. I mean, and whatever, like it, the, the tragic, <laughs> I can't help but think about this every time I watch a, a piece of shit movie is think about how much money just even a dumb low budget horror movie cost. It's probably more than most people can save in a lifetime. Yeah. So it's like, you've got, you've yeah. got something that represents vastly more than what most Americans will amass in their yeah. whole entire life to make fucking night swim. Yeah. And I'm not yeah, I'm not saying like the cast was great. I mean, I felt nah, they all I mean all right. <laughs> I, 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 I liked him. I liked him. Uh I liked the guy who played the father. I thought he did a okay job, but I, I, I think they did I like okay. the daughter. Yeah, she did a uh, she did a great job. I, I guess the little boy Elliot who was uh yeah, rough. It's kid acting, but uh uh I can't worse. You, you, you can't blame the actors though. You, you have to blame it on the writers and uh, this this it was just it's just full of tropes and dumb shit that you've seen a million times before, but amped up to the nth degree. Yeah, and like I mentioned, it's not even so bad that you can that you can have fun making fun of it because they don't give you anything in that way either. It's just yeah. so bland and just tepid, mediocre mucus of a film. It just yeah. really, really sucked. But um, <laughs> yeah, Night Swim. Night Swim. Boo. <laughs> Boo this Boo, movie. Boo, Night Swim. Boo this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, night swim it shit the pool that's ah. the headline see we're already I, I oh man we should just be we you should just come out to hollywood here and we'll just rewrite movies dude for um yeah i'm sure that I, i'm sure no one else has come to uh the the beautiful state of california with the same uh lofty goal <laughs> no, no there's no one out here uh <laughs> okay well i guess that's it uh, that's our three movie you got the triple decker here that's we, it we pounded you with romulus we got a little we got a little floaty with uh arcadia and then we just totally sank to the depths of the deep end with night swim oh yeah. perfect that was great dude yeah, yeah. thank you, you i didn't even have that written time. Yeah, let's just edit out the rest of this and then just cut that part in and then it'll be it, it'll probably be not even long enough to be on YouTube. It'll be a short. We'll make it a YouTube short. <laughs> we'll just make it a YouTube short and get millions of views on it with people telling us we're stupid. So that's... Well, there's no titty, so we're not getting millions of nothing. Uh, fuck. Okay, well, Need I mean, that can titties. be remedied right now. <laughs> oh, look. Uh, I can okay. show you my appendix scar if you want to see it. Oh, shit. Yeah, we got to talk about that later. Um, <laughs> okay, well, uh, thank you, everyone. This has been another our episode of cinematic suffering uh bitties and chunkies bits uh, and chunks y'all thanks for hanging in there give it a like i mean give it a thumbs down i don't care what you do i yeah, don't do what you care want. if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast platform please feel free to give us a five-star review or a one-star i guess for sure why not why not uh, do it do it <laughs> do it we dare you coward <laughs> uh so until next time guys thank you have a great night day week wherever you're at bye peace out <laughs>